What's poppin' knights? It's Sonokage, otherwise known as the King. And I come to you with another exciting part too. What if Goku and Vegeta trained Naruto and Sasuke? The fusions versus Moro. And as you can assume, this is the final part to Naruto Saga in this story. If we do continue it any further, it will be going on to Boruto's saga, which is still continuing. So it'll be more, it'll, I'll say more. It'll be very interesting, right, to see how the characters develop and grow in this world where key is now a viable aspect in their lives. So if y'all wanted to continue, just let me know. I would be happy to continue writing. I'm pretty well versed in Boruto. If you aren't well versed in Boruto, I have a suggestion for you. Um, watch episodes 1 through 20, I believe, and then go right to episode 99 or like 102. That's the best way to experience Boruto because I skipped a lot of the filler that is inconsequential to the story. Other than that, I think I've talked your ears off long enough. So let's get into it. Woo! I'm about to go cut me a brick, crushing your whole little shit. Whoa. Mars so cold, I fill up on cop with the blow. Now I'm like, Whoa. she a freak on the low. Now she wanna suck on my toes. And I'm like, Whoa. you look on me as hoe. Now you wanna sit on my toe. Nope. Bitch, I'm the king and the hustle so cold. Pull up on a nigga with a nine no coat. Spray and paint at the picture go. Kill me a nigga with a Bible pump. She says stop, don't go no more. Well, she my queen, can't treat her wrong. We don't fuck on, we just run on like my dog, bro. We don't slow up. Brandy, Brandy, now she wanna fuck me. Now she wanna hold me down. See her, my shot ring gun, don't let me run I'm a demon, I'm a beast, no I can't stop I'll stay in, whoa, hey, bitch, I'm the king of this shit The three stand across from each other Garuto is stretching, getting ready for the fight While Sajida is eyeing down Moro silently He then turns towards Garuto Who just finished his warm up as he says I'm going first. Goruto hears that and yells back. Hey, that's not fair. We might be too strong for him now. I want to fight too. Sajida stays calm as he responds. So, how about this, morons? We have 30 minutes in these forms. So, I'll go first for the first 10 minutes. Then you go for the next 10. And if we both somehow fail, we'll attack them together. Goruto scratches his chin in contemplation as he asks, But why should you go first? While this is happening, Moro is watching, dumbfounded. They're, they're ignoring him, as if he's some toy, some true toy to be sped up and thrown out when they're done. Are they that drunk off their own power? Do they no longer consider me a threat? How dare they? Moro begins to look around. He looks towards the ground. I can see the whole remaining of the Ninja Alliance is resting on Gara's sand. He then looks towards the area where he summoned it to entails. He can still see the stem of the tree. He then thinks if he flies over there, both fusions would attack him. So he must bide his time. No matter how strong they are, they're still Saiyans. They won't end the fight quickly. Even if by some miracle, their fusion makes them stronger than myself. I can lead them towards my goal. He then feels godly ore behind him. It's, it's Beerus and Whis, enjoying a few bowls of ramen. And beside them, an older gentleman who is kindly serving them ramen. He wonders for a brief second, who is this ramen guy? He then turns back towards the fusion and they're playing fucking rock, paper, scissors. Okay. He then decides it's time to invoke a little hostility. You insolent fools who dare to ignore me. Fine, I'll play your little game. Just hurry up and decide who goes first. The fusions completely ignore Moro. As they continue their game of rock, paper, scissors, Moro attempts to land stealthily. He wants to absorb a bit of Be Beerus and Whis's energy. 
but he finds it close to impossible without them noticing. But it is slightly doable. If he trickles their energy bit by bit, they won't even notice. As he goes down to attempt, he hears Goruto complaining that Sajida cheated. You, you used your Sharingan, didn't you? <laughs> a win is a win, loser. Don't go complaining now. Besides, we're ninja. Deception is one of our many talents. Now, time to get on to the main course. Sajida then flies towards Moro. He smiles as he exclaims. Well, well, looks like I'm first. That little game ate into my time. So looks like I won't be able to start too slow and enjoy this fight. So let me say five. Yes, five minutes. If you could survive five minutes, then I'll make sure your death is one to remember. Moro laughs at this boast of bravado from this fusion. As he states in retort, You really are drunk off your own power. What? Human, did you just give up and let the Saiyan take control? Pathetic. Sajida laughs. <laughs> I'm not Sasuke nor Vegeta. That Saiyan human you speak of don't exist at this moment. I am something new entirely. The tactical genius of an Uchiha. The limitless power of a Saiyan. I am Sajida, but to you, I might as well be death incarnate. And as that said, Sajida punches Moro in the gut, blindsiding him. Before he could react, he then uses Chidori and smacks him away. As Moro rolls, trying to gain his footing, Sajida powers up, going Master Dragon Sage mode. He then summons his Susano, slamming the giant sword down, cleaving the land, forcing dust and rubble to fly up. Moro's able to dodge by rolling. He then begins to flee towards the tree. Sasuke, or Sajida, begins to charge a gigantic beam, an electrified final flash. As he yells, Eat this, Mom! Sajida then uses his Renegon to swap places with the falling rubble. He's right beside the fleeing Moro. He then fires the attack, yelling, Say Chart! Indra's Flash! Moro then smiles as he thinks to himself, Eat this. <laughs> this. Poor choice of words, fusion, as you command. Moro opens his mouth, devouring the energy. As he's finished, he smiles. He's feeling more powerful than ever. Garuto yells, Sajida, have you lost your mind? Sajida just stands there, silently smiling at Moro, who she begins to gloat. You fool, I guess the Saiyan really did take over. All this power, I, I feel invincible. You must have forgotten who you're fighting. But for what you've done, I'll grant you a peaceful death. Moro is stopped in his tracks. His body, it's, it's rejecting this energy. And Sajida's smile grows as he exclaims. Pure nature energy condensed to its highest potential. Mortal, you may have consumed planets, but this is weaponized power that requires perfect control to utilize. So now you die. You die to your own hubris. It's a shame, really. I expected more. Could only last three minutes. Sajida powers down as Moro's screams grow silent. He turns to stone. He begins to walk away towards Beerus. One, he notices that Whis's eyes are still focused on Moro. Whis then turns to Sajida and says, He's not dead. What was that, Whis? It seems I made a miscalculation. While he is sealed in his prison of stone, it's only a matter of time before he frees himself. Sajida so wants to yell and retort, but he calms himself as he politely asks Whis to continue. Yes, as I was saying, he should be able to free himself, but there's no way of telling how long it'll take him to do so. Could be days, could be years, but are you willing to take that risk? He could reemerge when you're less prepared, when the Saiyans aren't here for your aid, 
could be at your children dealing with this threat, a threat you could prevent today. So Jita scoffs as he responds. Ah, uh, I see your point, Luis. Fine, I'll free him from the stone. He was desperate to reach that tree, though. It was probably for his final trump card. Its roots extend throughout this entire planet. We cut off the tree and kill him. We smile, saying back, So, you've noticed. Young Sasuke's intelligence is quite handy, it seems. Why, yes, he did plan to reach that tree. He was going to meld with it. He would turn the planet itself into a time bomb, or a bargaining chip, how you see it. You can kill him. But you would essentially kill the planet, unless you destroy that crystal on his forehead. Hmm, I see. Thanks for the advice, Whis. Sajita so smiles, and Whis is curious to this expression, asking why is he so excited? Well, Whis, it's my goal to fight against an opponent worthy of my strength, but it's become abundantly clear that nothing more I could do would help me achieve that. So now it becomes a test of my ninja abilities. And I can't deny the excitement of outsmarting my enemy. So you just sit here and enjoy your meal, Luis. We'll handle the rest. Sajida then walks up to the Moro snake statue and absorbs the nature energy that's inside of it. As Moro returns, he looks around, he sees his hands and feels relieved. But then Sage Sajida buries his head into the ground, pinning him. Moro can't move, nor escape. So then Sajida then gives an incentive. So, Goatman, do you still require revenge? Do you still believe you even have the slightest chance at victory? Now that you see you can no longer absorb our attack. Moro slams his fist in the ground in frustration, cracking the earth beneath him as he yells. Of course! I'd kill you all. I just need my divine tree. After I reach it, you'd all be begging for your lives. This, I swear, fusion. Ooh, that was almost intimidating. Move, you have 30 seconds to get to that tree and get ready. After that, I send in an idiot over there. Moro laughs. You regret this, fusion. Mm, we'll see about that now, won't we? Hurry up, your time's almost out. Sajida then turns his attention to Goruto as he yells, Hey, loser, my time's up, you are ready? Moro scurries away and melds with the planet, becoming one with the earth, and Sajida yells, Hey, Goruto, if you kill him, we all die. Only launch a lethal attack when I give you the signal. Your only job is to wear him down and break that crystal. Hearing that, Moro protects his crystal, forming the roots out of the ground and the hands that guard his face. He then swipes at the sideliners, those being protected by Gara. However, Sujita rushes in to protect them, using his godly blue Susano. He doesn't feel he can use to go to Dragon Sage mode. He yells back at Moro. Didn't I say your fight was with that idiot? No one else. Garuto rushes in furious that he would have even dare to attack his friends. Moro raised millions of the roots from the ground to protect himself, but Garuto was able to dodge swiftly. As his aura grows, six black balls begin to form around his back as he stands above Moro, eyeing him down. He says, Your life is connected with the planet right now, isn't it, Moro? Moro laughs as he responds. He throws a punch that Garuto blocks with ease. Moro's voice bellows as he continues his attack. That's right. There's nowhere left to run. I am the Earth. All life here on this planet belongs to me. For your insolence, everyone dies. That's when Goruto asks, while dodging Moro's attacks with ease, slipping into his six pass Ultra Instinct sign form. But, but why? Why do you have to do this, Moro? What reason do you have? Moro just laughs as he continues his assault, going more arms to attack Garuto with. I will be the strongest being in the universe. No being will challenge me as I make this multiverse my personal buffet. Garuto's aura spirals around him. 
as Moro's hand grows in closer. Goruto yells, Rasen bursts. He unleashes a spiral of aura that bursts his hands into shreds. He then summons a pure white Kurama avatar. He says, he thinks to himself, talk no jutsu won't work this time. As he says aloud, this is the end, Mora. I tried to show you sympathy. I tried to give you a second chance, but you're evil just to be evil. You deserve no pity. The Kurma avatar rushes Moro, and as Moro realizes he's outmatched, his body begins to deflate, preparing to explode. But that's what Sajidi was waiting for. He punches the earth with Susano, separating Moro from his spirit, revealing his crystal from his head, pending a clear target for Goruto. As he rushes Moro, Moro puts up his last defense, but, Nar but Goruto opens the Kurma avatar's mouth, absorbing nature energy, spirit energy, or Genki. Goruto then makes nine t clones that go to each tail. They add spiral energy to the ball as it shreds through Moro's defenses until it's right in front of him, unleashing a point-blank Rasin-tailed beast bomb to Moro's f***ing dome, obliterating it. The force of this attack dissipates as a shockwave can be felt throughout the universe. The only reason those close were safe was because of Sajida Susanos. He powers down, dropping everyone and the fusion then breaks suddenly. Sasuke questions, wait, that, that was only 15 minutes. And Vegeta scoffs. Yeah, the stronger you are, the quicker the fusion dissolves. It's why we power down so often. Our fusion's pool of strength used our, our pool of knowledge. Vegeta then tells Sasuke to wait here as he flies over to Whis, while Goku and Naruto give each other a high five. Naruto then tells Goku Sensei, hey, after this all cools down and we repair the village, before you leave, let's have one last fight. Just me and you. I learned a lot from my fusion. I want to try some things out. Goku smiles saying, of course, but he starved. They then head over to Whis and eat some ramen with him. He overhears Vegeta talking to Whis about bringing Dende over. Whis asks why and Goku interrupts. Actually, I agree. Whis, these kids fought hard and besides, we kind of brought this problem over here. I think they deserve some type of reward. Then they could make the Dragon Balls. We could give them three wishes. Beerus then yells, You idiots! We can't just give them Dragon Balls. That'll create a whole new list of problems. Then Vegeta says, Lord Beerus, have you ever had fudge brownies? Goku chimes up, Oh yeah! I love brownies. Chi Chi made some for Gotien's birthday. They're soft, gooey, and warm, and the chocolate just melts in your mouth. Beerus and Whis mouth start to water in anticipation. The Vegeta adds, then it's settled. You bring Dendi over here, we give them three wishes, and afterward Beerus destroys their Dragon Balls. And you get your brownies. Beerus grumbles, saying fine. Him and Whis then leave. One week later, Naruto is sparring with Hinata holding one hand behind his back, while he's holding something in that hand too. Neji, Tenten, Ten, Haku, and Ino are on the sidelines watching as they spar. Naruto is training his Ultra Instinct sign. He's avoiding, all his, he's avoiding all Hinata's attacks, but he has to concentrate all his focus just to dodge. He opens his eyes for a second, a brief second. He sees Hinata's close, he gets shocked and falls back, still holding that little black box. Instead of disappointment though, he smiles, saying, if I can't master this, I'm no match for Goku Sensei. Hinata sits down next to Naruto, asking if he's okay. She then wonders what's inside that box. He smiles and says, ah, You won, so you open it, Hinata. As she opens it, she goes silent. She begins to tear up. And Naruto sits up and wipes the tears from her face. As he states, Hinata. You've helped me so much, and, and I loved you since we were kids. Will, will you marry me? She cries as she says yes, and Neji's about to hop up and say something, but Haku and Tintin hold him back. Naruto looks to the side, and Haku gives Naruto a big thumbs up, and Naruto gives one back. He then turns back to Hinata, and the two begin to kiss, when a ray of light appears behind them. 
and they hear Lord Beerus say, you two get a move on, bring your friends. A few minutes pass and they gather everyone. Vegeta and Goku come bringing Whis and Beerus, some cupped ramen. They greet Dende, who just brought them their worlds, who just made them their world's first Dragon Balls. And he lets them know, once you make your first three wishes, Beerus will destroy these. So make them count. Vegeta then adds, Hey, Dende, you did live up to our end of the agreement, right? Dende smiles and says, yes, of course. Since this world is barren and hasn't had Dragon Balls before, and I know they're only getting three wishes, extending the, dragon, extending the dragon's power won't be too hard. Vegeta says, thank you. He then walks up to the Dragon Balls and summons the dragon, Shinron. I am the eternal dragon. Speak now and be granted your wish. Sasuke asks, Sensei, what, what, what does this mean? And Goku responds, this is your guy's reward for helping clean up our mess. So go ahead, wish for anything. You got three. So who are you giving them to? Jiraiya then pushes Naruto forward. Naruto looks confused. What? Why should he get the first wish? Naruto looks around and Haku puts his arm around Naruto's shoulder as he says, Naruto, you saved me. You saved the sand. You saved a leaf. You even saved that weird paper girl. And you were the one of the three spearheads in this war. It's fine. Take some time to be selfish. Naruto thinks for a second. He has Hinata. He finally has a family, but he never got a chance to actually meet his family. So he swallows and he says, Mr. Dragon, sir, I've always wanted to meet my parents. Is, is that possible to bring them back? A simple matter. My power is to bring back anyone that died 20 years ago. They were recently extended. So now, state your wish. Okay, right. Then Shinron, can you please bring my parents back? Your wish is now granted. Naruto looks around at the base of the dragon and he sees a tall man and a long red haired woman. The woman begins to tear up as she runs towards him and hugs him while steadily stroking his hair. While the tall blonde man is staring at the giant fucking dragon. But he doesn't overreact, seeing as how there's a cat man also standing next to a tall man with a halo and a small green man enjoying a bowl of noodles. He just walks to his wife and embraces his family. Hinata watches happily from the sidelines and Naruto introduces them. Next up, is Sasuke, who stares at the dragon, feeling, feeling a slight sense of intimidation as he speaks. Dragon, my goal, no, my wish is to restore the leaf to a state my brother Itachi will be proud of. So, Shinran, bring back all the Uchiha slain by the hands of Itachi Uchiha. I didn't need the speech, but your wish is granted, by the way. Next up is Sakura, but she doesn't really have a wish. Sasuke's in the village. They openly have feelings for each other. Her parents still alive and well, she's just happy. Same with everyone, but Tsunade looks a little antsy and Jiraiya speaks up. Shinron, is it possible for you to extend your powers a little bit further to bring back a child that died 34 years ago, as well as a man? As recently stated, I've only been granted special permission to revive someone from 20 years ago. At that most, that is my limit. I'm sorry. Jiraiya then turns to Tsunade and apologizes for even trying. She forces a smile that's unconvincing. Jiraiya then turns to Minato saying it's good to have you back. He turns back to the dragon. Shinron. Then please, revive all the ninja who died at the hands of the Akatsuki and Mora in our last war. 
Thank you. A simple matter. Your wish is now granted. Farewell. The Dragon Balls turn to stone, and each one flies off in a different corner of the world. Whis looks at Beerus. My lord, aren't you going to destroy those? Destroy what? I didn't see any Dragon Balls, Whis. Just flying rocks. <laughs> You're too kind, my lord. Naruto then runs up to Goku. He is so happy. He's grateful. He has tears in his eyes, but he wipes them away saying, Goku Sensei, what about our next match? Goku smiles as he says back, Sorry, Naruto. Some other time. I got to keep my promise to Lord Beerus. But I'll be back soon, don't you worry. So make sure you get stronger. And Vegeta adds, Oh, and I'd find those Dragon Balls if I were you. Danger runs trouble as they get a lot of hand. He throws them a dragon radar. He thought something like this might happen. We'll be seeing you now. And with that, the story's end. So, what did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What do you rate it? Um, that was a blast to write. Uh, the ending was super emotional. Um, and I think that it ends on a really good note. Boruto's world will now never be the same. There is always somebody watching. So, what do you think should happen in the next Boruto part? I'm up to taking suggestions. If you want the story to continue, let me know. And if you have ideas for it, also, let me know. I'm always up to suggestions and I would love to continue the story. Other than that, I think it's time to move on to my favorite time, time of the day, the commenter call out let's go our first comment is from jacob wiktor who says show this conspiracy about all my secret love child they begin and you got damn right they do the next one's from the same video here's from jordy's gaming who says wait so we're going to get a lot more content now that's 10 times better and you're right i'm doing what i can to make sure i get the most content possible in whatever little free time that i have right now i'm rebuilding everything up from the ground up so i'm gonna give it my all um i do want to say one thing before I go to another comment, I'm going to have to run these very short and I'm going to, have to speed through them all because I'm running short on time. And if I edit the video at this length, it's going to kill me. So the next comment to, comes from the eternal God of possibilities who says, oh man, oh man, this is getting exciting. I mean, it's going to be epic. Love the artwork for their fusions. Can't wait for the vid. And here you go. Vid's coming out just for you, brother. Just for you, battle. And another one from S. Tavo Karkin, who says chapter 14 of Goku and Vegeta train Naruto and Sasuke is missing. And I'm going to fix that. I'm also going to fix the um, issue where the audio for what Itachi was saying to Sasuke is cut because that is very important to the story and it defines Sasuke's character going going. I want to keep that going. Last comment for the day comes from Draco Kage, who says this is the what if I've been, this is what I've been waiting for months for. And you damn skippy, brother. I'm making sure that I'm giving y'all all the content I possibly can. I ain't gonna skimp y'all on this. So, with that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you want merch, get yourself some merch. Um, link in the description. If you want my music, listen to my music. Other than that, Onokage, out. Peace. Nobody speak, nobody get show choked. If you run the home, it gonna get smoked. No time for the lame ass jokes. I'm the goat. You a gringo when that story's been told. Right, so. I make money moves, controlling every view. Oh no, you got hella proof, but no one's helping you. What's wrong? Now you on your own. You really want to smoke? Oh no, Chico really done it wrong. What's wrong? The hell of better in this college, bro. Wow. Keep talking crazy, I might go post though. Yeah. Always trouble when they go too far. Yeah. Nobody messing me familiar. Ah. Father.